Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In the video where I tested the T-38 that will be included in my plane pack, I mentioned that there would be two other planes that I would be working on before I released the updated version of the plane mod. And this is of course one of those two planes, the B-52, and we are going to try it out. But it has been a fraught development process in this case, uh, I will explain in a moment, but of course uh, seeing this, you should be able to guess what the other plane is. It is, of course, the X-15 that I'm going to try to do. And dealing with both the B-52 and the X-15 is going to be an interesting challenge. But let's just focus on the B-52 first without the whole separation and trying to get to space thing. Uh, the B-52 has been a problem because with the T-38, I thought I had the control surface thing dealt with. I could integrate control surfaces into the wings and all, that turned out not to be true. Uh, in fact, uh, what happened when I tried to do it with this is the control surfaces turned in all sorts of weird ways. Even though I have the control surface axis properly aligned, it turns out, I think, that you can't do it like this. It has to be in line with the x-axis strictly which means the entire wing would have to be rotated for by 30 degrees and it's really complicated and even then I tried rotating it by 30 degrees forward and aligning uh, this line here with the x-axis and even that didn't work out quite right so I was having trouble and for now we're going to go back to the procedural uh, control surfaces as you can see I mean that's why the NASA logo is clipped there because of course I had the rudder integrated into the vertical stabilizer and had the logo properly going across. This side is not too bad, but yeah, the logo was overlapping the rudder initially because, well, I thought I could have a rudder, but it turns out that, uh, yeah, the rudder, all of the control surfaces were having a problem, and no matter how I aligned them, they did not work out. But overall, I think I need to work on the textures a bit. Um, I haven't put textures in limited yet, so shininess is a thing, but um, I need to break out some of the some of the bits and turn them into other materials. This is a facsimile of the plane that the X-15 used to launch. So I believe it was called Balls 8 uh, because it was serial number 008. And it, uh, it had different liveries over time. Sometimes it had a black nose and sometimes it had other things. But this is sort of like an average livery for it. And we are going to try it out. Uh, we have it uh, fueled halfway, and actually if it's fueled all the way, it's over its maximum takeoff weight, even though we basically only have the empty weight besides. So I don't quite understand that, but Wikipedia said that this was the correct fuel load, so I went with it. And the wing mass is being calculated by far, and the body mass, I just made up the difference as far as what the the empty mass. Actually, um, I think I have an updated version that's a little bit heavier, or it's supposed to be. Anyway, I'll have to check that. I think it was supposed to be 82 tons empty, so it's actually a little bit light right now, but with the fuel, it, it won't matter much. So, we are half-fueled, and probably for the X-15 launch, it might be fueled even less than that. It's not like it needs to fly for five hours. So, we are not doing intercontinental bombing with this. We are just doing some launches and they'll probably have much less than its regular fu or full fuel load in most cases. So let's take it out to the runway and see how it flies. Okay, so here it is on the runway and throttle up and ignition. The, the plume and sounds could do with a little work when it comes to the jet engines. I don't even hear it right now, or see any plumes, but okay, it's mysteriously quiet. It had the startup sound, but it's definitely mysteriously quiet right now. I don't know what's up with that. The engine parts, of course, custom, which causes its own problems. The inline landing gear is tough. Uh, can we get off? Um, oh, 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 we have lift. Yeah, so of course we have the wingtip landing gear as well. Tail strikes are a serious issue with this one. That was a pretty high takeoff speed. 
It's really quiet out here right now because the I, I don't know why the engine's like that. Wow, it, it can it can go up, but well, it's losing speed now. Yeah, on the whole, I'd say I'd have to do a lot more work here. The control surface issue took it out of me. I made the model during a live stream to a large extent. So it's fairly simple and lightweight. And really, I only meant it for the purpose of launching the X15 off of it. So. At least for now, having it lightweight is not so bad. It's just the Mark 1 3, uh, sorry, the Mark 3 cockpit in there. Uh, so, however, that's modified. I've got raster prop monitors. It's got the raster prop monitor things, and it looks like the shuttle windows. But at least, I mean, you can't really see a whole lot out there. But yeah, I have no idea. I put the same plume configuration and therefore also the sounds that I had on the 747 so I'm not entirely sure, but scaled down a little bit so I'm not entirely sure why we don't hear anything <laughs> I, like, I guess I'll have to figure that one out uh, previously I had uh, tested the control surface actuation and found that that was not working so that was about it I have not done a full flight with this With a hefty shadow on it, it looks good though. I always preferred the tall tail version of the B-52. I had a scale model of it, uh, 170 second scale, huge thing. Before I had to eventually get rid of that because I was moving. Uh, where I put the ailerons, it's actually the second set of flaps. I think the ailerons are further outboard as a matter of fact, but I didn't have a good indication on the schematic for exactly how they were supposed to be so I just went with these here but yeah that's actually another set of flaps there the ailerons are further outboard but I assure you that this would give plenty of roll authority we don't need more roll than this and flaps well we'll get to that eventually actually this B-52 the one that the X-15 launched on is supposed to have a notch in the first set of flaps on the right wing and that was to fit the X-15's vertical stabilizer so there's a lot of things where if we want to be perfectly accurate we're gonna to have to fix things with this this I'll call this a first draft well if we accidentally broke the sand barrier, that would be wrong, but we're nudging up to Mach 0.9 right now. Well, yeah. Now, the question is whether it can slow down without the air brakes. I'll throw down. Ooh! Okay, so why does it do that? Right? That doesn't seem right. It's not supposed to immediately dump speed like that. That's dangerous. I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure that out though. That is obviously not good. Not all the planes act like that and I don't know what makes one plane do that and another plane not do that. It's gotta be something to do with drag. Let's bring up those aerodynamic forces. I mean, yeah the wings are gonna cause drag so that's not a huge surprise. I, I don't see a line out of the body but maybe that's because it's within the body or something. I don't know. I don't know why the body doesn't have a big old line coming through it, but um, but the wings are huge. I mean, actually, the cross section of the wings is probably larger than the cross section of the body. The engines seem fine, though. Oh, let me throw down again and see. Oh, look at that. So, okay. So what happens seems to be that is that when I throw down suddenly there's huge drag vectors on the engines. Now the engines have the air intake and jets integrated, right? There's the intake and the 
engine both on the same part. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. There is a stock part like that. The Goliath has both the intake and the engine on it. So I didn't think that would be a problem. But yeah, it looks like there's some weird thing going on when we throw down when it comes to the engines. So again, huge drag lines. I don't know what to make of that. Anyway, we'll turn those off for now. I guess I have sort of my answer. It's not very satisfying though. It's gonna cause problems. And it's really like, when it's 50% it doesn't go up. You, you see, this is how it is when I've got 50% throttle. But then suddenly, right when I do less than 50%, we get those. See? Like that. So that is peculiar as all heck. But it's not with all planes, that's for sure. Even among the ones I make. I think I have... I think... Yeah, the, I, I need to check on the normals on the rear edge of the vertical stabilizer, it looks like. So... People have asked me what my wish list items for KSP2 might be. And right now, really high on the list is the control surfaces should work regardless of how they're oriented in Unity as long as we've got the proper transform on it. Basically, there's a, there's a little empty set of vectors that indicate the orientation of the control surface. And it should just be able to actuate based on that. And not need to be aligned to the unity world in a particular way in order for it to work or I don't even know uh, that may may not be what's going on but all I'm saying is there's got to be a better way for this these control surfaces and I know that's probably not foremost on their mind because Kerbal Space Program is not a flight simulator but that would help a lot <laughs> I'm just saying it'd be nice I'm sure it'd fix other things and make other things easier too. There are a lot of things that aren't the flashy parts of the game, you know, like other star systems and stuff like that, that are more important to modders. I'm tempted to check what the cockpit view looks like, but I think we'll just try and take this seriously here. Especially since the throttle is working weird. I overdid it on the right. Okay, yeah, this, I mean, it turns like a B-52, so it's not easy. And of course, my point of view is weird right now. Don't know what the stall speed actually is. We got off the runway at a pretty high speed. Well, oop, well, anyway, we'll take that. And it's slowing down in a hurry of those drag vectors on the engines I suppose yeah so I've got some problems to fix quite a lot actually the engine sounds I have no idea the engine drag a lot has to do with the engines uh, maybe I'll be able to fix that texture since we don't longer have the rudder like that and I would like to make the engines look a little bit better on the inside but those will be low priority I want to get the x15 sort of worked out and the combination of the two worked out first and then we'll work worry about the touch-up since this can fly we'll just go with it for now I think um, the engine sounds maybe important though anyway so with that all being said this has been the test flight of a b-52 in Kerbal Space Program um, I don't know if anybody else has made a b-52 with a Kerbal Space Program it's actually a more likely thing since the x-15 exists but anyway with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.